Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. This is our very first session for our webinar series. Out for our webinar series. Now, Tazwar Muhammad Al Alamin will take over the session and uh, let you know all about uh, Adobe Illustrator. So, um, hello, everyone. I'm Tazwar Muhammad Al Alamin. Um, as you have been all notified. I'll be taking today's session uh, learning, uh, teaching you the basics of Illustrator. Um, okay, I would like to confirm one thing first. Uh, am I audible? Is, uh, if any one of the co-hosts would tell me. Yes, you are, you are. We can hear you. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so we will be uh, learning the basic tools of Illustrator today. Uh, about the layout, uh, layout of Illustrator, how the uh, tools work. I'll be showing. I'll be taking you to the uh, uh, to every tool, so that you get to know how Illustrator works. So since today is just a basic session, so I won't be uh, creating anything, like any logo or anything, but uh, you will be able to uh, learn the basics. Okay, we'll get started now. I'm using Illustrator uh, CC 2020. If uh, any one of you want to download, uh, you guys will find it online. Uh, I'm using a 2020. Uh, it has uh, all of the uh, new features. If you even download Illustrator 2017, I think you will be able to find uh, the same features. First of all, to start with Illustrator, uh, I'm going to uh, create a new document here and show you how everything works. I'll, I will also show you how the shortcut keys for everything work so that uh, you guys have an idea. Okay, so what you are seeing in the screen currently, um, this uh, white rectangle, it's called an artboard. In Illustrator, everything we do is, an, is a vector. We convert it into a vector object and then we work on it. That's why uh, if you find online, you will see that whenever you're searching any file for Illustrator, uh, which is AI form, AI uh, is short for Adobe Illustrator. These types of files are always uh, told as vector files because the type of objects that we work on in Illustrator, these are all vector files. Okay, if you guys uh, see in the screen here, you will see um, in the, Top left, this is a panel from where uh, you can uh, almost control and find everything. Like here, this is a file tab from where uh, you can uh, open a new fi AI file or you can create a new AI file. Or if you have worked with any previous files, this will show up here. You can save files from here. You can uh, export. Uh, the export option is for uh, when you have created any object, uh, you would like to save it in a format, suppose um, in a picture format. So I'm showing you here. Um, look, there are uh, different formats. There are, there's AutoCAD drawing, um, there's JPG, there's a, a format for Macintosh, there's PNG, there's Photoshop format, different types of formats which you want to uh, save the output file into, you can uh, save it from here. You have to go to file and export, okay. And then it comes the edit tab from where uh, you can uh, control the copy paste and uh, cut uh, methods and also the undo and redo. I will be going through the shortcuts later on. So from this tab, uh, you will be able to uh, find these. Uh, you will be uh, able to uh, correct the spelling like you can check spelling for any type that you made and uh, etc. And if someone needs to find uh, the keyboard shortcut, you guys can click here and inside Illustrator, it will show you the keyboard shortcuts that are available here. I hope my screen is visible. Um, all the shortcuts are given here. Uh, one thing I would like to tell about the shortcuts is that um, it's good if you use the shortcuts because um, it makes uh, working with Illustrator very easy. Suppose um, 
uh, 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 once I take you into the shortcuts, then yeah, you'll be able to understand the difference. Okay. Uh, the object panel is where if you uh, create an object, uh, I'm just creating object uh, just to show you right now. Suppose um, I've created a circle. I'll, I'll take you through the uh, methods later on again. I'm just showing you uh, the object panel, the work of object panel right now. So I've created two circles as you can see here, right? Now I'm selecting this. I'm going to the object panel. And now this object, this object panel will help me um, change uh, these two objects in different manner like there is an arranging option if i um if i arrange and bring both of them to the front uh you won't be able to see the difference if all of these are in the same color wait i'll change the color for your understanding um okay so uh there's a green circle and there's two black circles behind it right now i'm going to align uh, arrange and I'm going to bring these two into front. So okay, it's bringing them into front. Other than that, uh, you can uh, transform this object. Like uh, you can uh, scale it through here. Uniform sky, I'm taking it to 50%. So it became smaller. So these type of uh, transformations that you would like to do, you can uh, do with this tab. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are shortcuts to do it more easily. Um, Secondly, uh, in object panel, uh, you will be able to find uh, there are different types of things that tools that you can do. Um, there is path, um, there is shape, and all of this uh, works with the object. So everything related to an object, you will be able to find it under here. Okay. Now uh, this type tab, this tab is here to show you uh, anything you have uh, written. Uh, Okay, my illustrator got stuck. Okay, I'm back. Um, anything that you write. Um, suppose, here, hello. Now, uh, by selecting that object, uh, I can change the font. See? There are other ways to do that, but you know, if anyone gets lost and they cannot find other way, you can find it from here. You can change the sizes and all, etc. But I will show you how easily you will be able to do that, like in your um, screen layout, like I have, like I have everything. Yeah, so it's easier if you have a, everything on your screen. So I will tell you how to bring uh, all of these on your screen so that you won't have to um, select from here, you know, and save time. And the select panel uh, is uh, to uh, just select. Uh, suppose uh, I already selected these. Now, if I um, go to select panel and I'm selecting next object below. So the only object here present is this, right? So I'm selecting this through this, but I know it's, you know, kind of lengthy to do uh, in this manner, but uh, you will be able to see other ways to do it as well. Okay, moving on. Um, there's this effect panel where uh, you will be able to apply different types of effects uh, to your object. Like there are illustrator effects, as you can see, and there are Photoshop effects. The illustrator effects uh, lets you work with uh, the effects that you want to apply on uh, the object. And usually uh, we use these Photoshop effects on uh, images. Usually we use this on images, suppose uh, artistic and blur, if you uh, if you blur a solid color object, then it won't have any change in it because the blur effect won't be seen. But if you blur an image, then you will be able to see the blurry effect. That's why it's uh, these are all Photoshop effects and uh, these are Illustrator effects. There is an option uh, to create a 3D. Like you can select an object and select 3D mode, and there are options to do that. I'll show you. Okay, now. Uh, the thing that I was saying that, um, let's see. The thing that I was saying, uh, how to bring everything uh, on your screen so that you know you won't have to work from here, right? Uh, let me check the chat button. Um, okay, I guess I'm audible. Okay, good. 
Okay, now to bring uh, all of these, uh, as you can see here, um, the, uh, this is the color and color guide panel. First of all, if you in install Adobe Illustrator at the first, you won't, be, you won't see these, right? This gradient panel, the SWAT test, brush symbol, it won't be here. I'm remo removing everything so that I can show you again. These three will be here. Uh, the properties tab, the layers tab, and the I will, uh, I'm taking you through the properties tab at first. Um, the properties tab will, first of all, if you don't have anything selected with your mouse in the artboard, then it will show you the properties of the artboard. Uh, remember uh, the rectangle white that I talk, talked about, this is the background, this is the artboard. So if you don't have anything selected, then uh, the properties tab will um, show you the properties of the artboard. From here, if you select edit artboard, then you will be able to uh, scale the artboard, change its shape, right? Sometimes we require uh, the artboard size uh, because um, when we create, um, I'm talking from my experience, uh, when we create, uh, Illustrator files or print files for different clients. Uh, sometimes uh, there we have to create different product labels. So the clients tell us uh, the specific measurements for um, their label, right? So if we um, properly fix uh, the measurements of the artboard here, as you can see, uh, this is uh, width of the artboard and this is height of the artboard. Now, not necessarily that it, it ho always has to be uh, in a unit called point. I'm showing you there are different points. As you uh, see here, the, there is option for picas, there is inches, millimeters, centimeters, pixels. We use pixels whenever we are creating any content uh, for online posting, like uh, for any website or something. Uh, there is um, selected resolution for a picture, right? So uh, you can use uh, the unit pixels in artboard and then you can uh, put on the resolution suppose i'm putting here 1920 into 1080 so in pixel format as you can see the artboard size has been set so we required this uh, for a uh, different reason so this goes how you can uh, change the artboard now uh, coming next uh, as you can see uh, there is an option called a uh, ruler and grid um, I would like to ask again that uh, if uh, these writings are available to be seen or, you know, if you are being able to see that what's written here. Uh, can any one of uh, the co-hosts uh, please tell me if it's visible? Uh, you make it a little bigger, zoom in, and then it would be more visible for us. Um, the problem is that uh, when we zoom in in Illustrator, uh, I can only zoom in on the artboard. Um, that's a problem. Okay, then I'll take you to, uh, I guess you can see my cursor, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so I'll, I'll point with the cursor and then I'll tell you. Uh, it would have been easier um, if all of you had illustrators open right now. Yeah, not a problem if you don't. Okay. So uh, the cursor that I'm pointing here right now, this is a ruler and grid. It's below the document properties. Here you will, uh, if you need specific measurements to create something on the artboard, you put on a ruler I have clicked on to show ruler and you can see here, there are ruler options. So if you create any object and you want to align with it, then you will be able to uh, notice carefully that if I double click on the ruler, you see a line, it has emerged, right? So if I'm creating an object and I want to align it, suppose in the middle of an artboard, I'm uh, moving it and I, I'm taking it to the middle of the artboard. I'm deleting this. So if you want to put this object in the center, so if you have a ruler and if you're working with many objects and then you would require this ruler to keep track of everything. 
then comes the grid usually grid is used for more a uh, graphical works those who work with a uh, precise measurement it's easier if you uh, click on graph and enable this but usually when we're doing artwork on illustrator uh, i don't require this so i always keep it off and sometimes i i use this ruler as i told you for uh, different labels we have to uh, use specific measurements so this uh, ruler tool helps you do that okay now to show the transparency right if you click uh, showing transparency grid then any object um suppose uh, i'll show you uh, the difference that's the artboard right and i'm creating a green or white rectangle okay white right? so anything that's um, below the white is transparent right there, there is no object below this white rectangle that's why it's showing transparent so if you uh, select this uh, show transparency grid then you will be able to see what in the artboard which part of the artboard is remaining transparent and if you wish then you know you can hide it again like for your work okay now snap option um the snap option for mine is um on right now like snap to point and snap to grid when you uh, turn these on then when you are moving something then you will be able to um when you are uh, taking any object near to something then uh, uh, there there is a smart uh, guide that will uh, show you like how you can snap to the grid or you know snap to the uh, pixel wise right so this will show you how to do that or this will uh, give you a smart guide uh, now uh, i i will show you how to enable the smart guide later on uh, i will take you there okay first of all uh, let's finish this okay now uh, if you can see um there are preferences um scaling corners scale stroke and effect preview use preview bounds right for quick uh, quick actions you see uh, there is a document setup and preferences i'll show you what's a document setup the document stands for uh, this whole uh, artboard right and everything we're working with here you can see uh, the unit has been set to pixels as i showed earlier here and uh, you will be able to set the uh, grid colors uh, now if you go to transparency grid then uh, uh, you will be able to see it see the color change how come keeping it light and uh, the preset of the document you will be able to uh, find it in document setup when we uh, work with higher resolutions that you see there is a resolution option medium resolution low high so whichever you are working with uh, you can select it from here also uh, you will find a document setup not only in quick actions but you will be able to find this in file tab as well here you can find it in here as well and there is also a shortcut key uh, the all control plus p um, i'm pressing it oh sorry okay so i press the shortcut and uh, there's a document set up so you can set up the document from here and from preferences you can set the preferences for uh, this software that you're using adobe illustrator the keyboard uh, increments this preference for a selection and anchor this well there are lots of other stuff but i won't go through this now since we are covering the basics okay moving on um there we are now selecting the layers panel this layers panel is the same like the photoshop how photoshop layer works uh, this also works in the same way in the layers panel you will be able to see that which object is above which object right so um this uh, i tapped on this uh, ellipse or a circle um and i'm taking it above these two uh, black circle i'm just uh, clicking on them and dragging them above right so now if you see if i move this above that two circles you see that uh, this circle has moved to uh, front of this uh, two circles right this green circle has moved above these two circles so 
So in this layer panel, you will be easily uh, able to, you know, change the arrangement of objects, right? Suppose, um, okay, I removed that. I'll create another object for you to show. Okay, we have a red rectang rectangle. I'm now dragging this rectangle um, below the first white ellipse. So now you can see how this works. It's easy. So that, you know, every time you don't have to, um, you know, go here object and then, you know, you have to arrange and you, know, you don't have to do all of this. You can do it from this layers panel where every object that you have created will be here. Okay, moving to libraries panel. Usually uh, this feature, um, you will be able to see any library or any file that you have created and, you know, sync to the cloud. You will need a creative cloud uh, cloud account for that, but in Bangladesh uh, the, it's not available because uh, in my currency our country is not uh, listed to open accounts in a creative cloud. Anyway, you see there is an option and there is a small right arrow above the properties layers and libraries panel. If you click this, and then you will get more space to work on your artboard whenever you require this and you can make it available here. But I prefer to, you know, always keep it open so that you know it's easier to work with when I'm working with objects, right? Okay, now finishing with this step, now I was going to show you um, how you can uh, get those other tools right on your screen so that you don't have to uh, bring them up again while you work, right? So uh, listen carefully, you will find all of these in the window panel. I'll show you, uh, see, uh, I found uh, the color. The color and color guide is here. I'm uh, getting on the color guide. Oh, it's already there with the color panel, Never mind. Um, I'm bringing up the brushes panel there. Okay, everything was connected there, right? Uh, okay, so I'll move everything differently so that you will be able to see. I've, uh, pu I, I had put them all in the same tab so that it's easier to work with. Uh, I'll show you here. Um, so now see this gradient option. See all the other tools that I require is there, right? In the window panel, the pathfinder, everything that I would require. I'm just showing you where we, you would find all of those. There's also an actions panel. You'll be able to see which action you have completed after which one. It helps you, you know, undo or, you know, pause or, you know, record, you know, do stuff like this. But I don't usually require this. So I'm keeping it there. There's the symbols panel. Okay, what else left? You can find the graphic styles and appearance and everything you will be able to find it here. Okay, now I'll move on um, with the tools that we will require. First of all, I'm taking all of this in one place. I'm just dragging it into another panel as you can see, and the blue light appears. And if you release the mouse, then you know, it will be all in one place. You can take it here as well. You can take it here as well, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, suppose I don't want to keep it, you know, hovering around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it with this line, right? So it's there. And um, suppose if I want to put it below here, it's okay. There's that, and now, okay, oops. Okay. Taking it away, and I will put it here. Okay, so I have my brushes, gradient symbol, color, color guide, everything over here. Okay, moving on. Now I will show you the 
work of the basic tools that you will require to work in Illustrator. Um, Deleting everything, okay? Okay. First of all, uh, when you turn on Illustrator, um, you will have uh, these tools, okay? The basic tool. Now, if you want to have access to all of the tools in Illustrator, then uh, you see uh, there is an option for edit editing the toolbar. You can select here, and here you will be able to find all of those tools. Now, if you don't want to go through this hassle every time, and you know you want to select the tools just right from here, so do do this. Uh, there is another option as you can see here, and you know select uh, advanced option. So now every options will be um, available here every tool and every option for uh, the tools inside you will be able to find it also here and uh, i'll take you through the two the first one it's a selection tool the selection tool is just for you know selecting objects right? so um here uh, you can get the idea from the name I have created a rectangle. I'll show you how to create the rectangle. First of all, I'll take you through the um, selection tool. Um, so I've selected the selection tool, and now you know if I tap on this object, then you know I can do anything with it. You know I can move around. I can you know rescale, resize, do other things. Now the thing that's different on Illustrator is that we work with uh, vectors, right? So vectors have paths vectors have points like vector have uh, vectors have uh, anchor points so that we can uh, change the shapes of objects in different manner and you know create our artwork we have tools for that as well i'll show you so basically with uh, selection tool so the name is selection tool um you're just selecting an object and you can move around and uh, reshape what i just showed now comes uh, the direct selection tool. The selection tool is in black and the direct selection tool is in white, right? So just now that I have talked about the points of a, a path or object, you see uh, when I've selected the direct selection tool, uh, now it's showing me four points around this object. These are the anchor points. Now I can select one point I've selected one anchor point and now I can move only this point, right? I've only moved this point. It's editing this point only, right? So through this direct, the direct selection tool, you can uh, do this. For group selection, uh, if uh, I have to create another object for this, for groups, uh, you'll be able to find group selection if you select the uh, direct selection tool if you uh, hold the you know tap on mouse and then you will be able to see the other options uh, inside options on every tool if you click and hold then you will be able to find the inside option the group selection tool is for you know selecting uh, groups oops okay what's up here? okay see i've selected uh, the group through this if i was going through the selection tool it does the same thing. And now if you have created any um, group of objects, then you will be able to uh, you know, select with this. But usually it's not required. Uh, you will be able to uh, you know, do this easily using a shortcut on your keyboard. I will show you that. OK, so I have these two objects. Um, I'll change this color. Um, blue and black rectangle right so if i want to say like you know both of those i can just you know hover my mouse over these two so you know, both of them are selected this or you know if there are you know other objects that you don't want to select suppose oops i'm copying this suppose here is an another object right so you know if you, you can hover over it so this will get selected so making sure that this doesn't get selected so what you will do is that you click the first object, then you press shift on keyboard, right? 
shift. You press shift on keyboard to uh, select uh, numerous objects and you then click the second object. So only these two objects are selected now. Cool. Moving on, um, the magic wand tool. I think it's a good tool to use. Uh, sometimes we're working with many objects on the screen and we have to only select uh, a similar type object in the screen. So what magic wand does is that it will only select the object of the same fill, I mean the same color. So you see, I just tapped on this blue one and both of the blues got selected. So this is how a uh, magic wand tool works. Moving on, um, there is uh, this lasso tool. You will be able to find uh, the lasso tool also in Photoshop, but their um, work in Illustrator is a bit different. With the lasso tool, what, you, what we do is that um, we put a circle or any shape around any object and the anchor point inside the you know, created march and oops the sorry the tool now you will be able to only change these two points see i have selected only these two points with my lasso tool. I'm showing another example here. I've only selected this point, right? So whenever you're dealing with um, changing the shape of anchor points or changing the shape of an object using the points, then you will always use the uh, direct selection tool. Only this tool gives you access to the, you know, the points. So now that with lasso, I have, uh, I had created a shape around this uh, anchor point. So now only this anchor point is being changed. Now your question might arise. I can I, I could have done with um, the direct selection, right? So if I select um, this point, then I can do that. But you know this allows you to um, change the points of a single object. I've selected uh, these two uh, points and now only uh, the points in this object is changed. Suppose what if I had wanted that I want to change the shape of, you know, both of this and this object simultaneously, right? So I'm shift clicking to uh, select both of the objects and now I'm going to the lasso tool. Suppose I want to change the anchor points of these two, right? So I'm creating a lasso tool around there. Now, if I uh, go to the selection, uh, select, now you can see that only the anchor points of these two objects are moving. So this is how uh, the lasso tool works. Moving on, uh, the pen tool. The pen tool is a, a very uh, integral part of Illustrator because um, usually using pen tool, we create, uh, create different lines and paths. Like usually what we work in Illustrator most, most of the times. So if you uh, have selected your pen tool, then you know uh, you just uh, click on the screen and you will get a point showing me a line for the second point where I'm going to put the point. See, now I've created a line, right? So I'm clicking the selection tool so that um, this line goes goes away and I can work with uh, the this object, right? So I'm selecting the selection tool. And now, as you can see that this line, it's a path. I can, you know, rotate it and, you know, reshape it and do other stuff. But if you had selected the pen tool, then you wouldn't have been able to do that because, you know, it only lets you work with the points. Suppose I want to extend this line in a different manner. So click any of the end and, you know, you can continue from there. See, I'm creating a shape just by creating points. Now, now uh, this is an important part. Look, this is an open path. Okay. Whenever I am putting the final point to the first point where I had created uh, this line, 
this what we'll do is that make it um oops uh, make it a closed path um, okay i'm zooming in so that then it's clear Now this has become a closed path. Now even if you want to, you know, increase this shape, you won't be able to do it through pen. Like after you have created a closed path, then you will be only able to edit that point or either remove it. Usually when you uh, take this pen tool on a closed path point, then it will show you that you know the minus sign as you can see that it will if you click now that it will uh, remove the point <coughs> so you can extend any shape while it's still open okay and there is also uh, see in the pen tool there's option for adding anchor points delete anchor points or you know uh, changing the shape of anchor points see how it works anchor points okay now i know this topic includes another tool uh it's the curvature tool what curvature tool uh allows you is that you can create curvature lines basically um this is the point i've created another point here and now see before i'm even going to uh, the next point it's already creating a curvature right here you can see I'm just you know putting my points on the screen and you know it's creating curvature so with curvature lines yeah you can do this moving on uh, the text tool um, you put on the text and you know you, you hover and create a text um, object and now if you um, I have shown that you know you would find the type and you know recent fonts and size over here right you can also find them in the properties tab. Everything related to the property of this object will be found there. So I'm writing something. Hello there. Cool. So um, this is hello there. Okay. And here in character, you can see that uh, the uh, different fonts are available here for me to change. Uh, there is the text size for me to change. And um, if I had two lines here, then I would have uh, been able to, you know, select the spacing be between the lines, select the spacing uh, bef uh, between the letters, and the alignment in the paragraphs. You know what we do in you know, Microsoft Word. So same thing. One thing I would like to tell. Uh, this if you uh, edit a text like that like to change the shape and all you have to create this text uh, you have to change this uh, text object to a vector object at first everything that you need to uh, change in illustrator you have to convert it into an object first so what I'm going to do is that uh, I am gonna right click on the text and there is an option for creating outlines so what creating outlines does is that you know it turns it into an object so now, if I zoom in, all of these are objects, different objects, different, different shapes kind of, and they're grouped together. I will be taking you through a grouping. Uh, okay, I, I think it's better if I show you now, it will help, okay. I'll show you how to group objects. You know, basically what uh, what we do in uh, Microsoft as well, right? We group, group different objects so that, you know, we don't have to work individually again. So we group them. So I'm shift clicking two objects. I'm right clicking and then I'm selecting group. So these two are grouped now. I can ungroup them again, you know, by following the same procedure. Okay, at this point, um, you uh, you guys would need uh, to know about the undo undo effect of Illustrator. Uh, it's a great thing because you know when we're working with Illustrator, we make um, we make uh, different mistakes while we're working with Illustrator. So we always require to undo stuff. Huh? So 
to easily undo on keyboard, what you need to do is you have to press Control Z. Suppose, look, I'm deleting this object. Oh, another thing, uh, to delete any object in Illustrator, you can easily use a key in your keyboard, the delete key that's there. Easily, you, you will be able to delete objects in that manner. Now, now that I've deleted this object, I will, I want to, you know, bring it back. Suppose I, I did it you know, mistakenly. So I'm going to control Z and boom, it's back on the screen. So there, it's a work of uh, undo effect. You can also redo this thing if you add shift to this combination. So control Z was for undo, shift control Z is for redo. Boom, it's gone. So I redid the, you know, thing. So, okay, so I'm bringing it back again. You can uh, set the amount of redos in the settings, like how many set, uh, how many redos you want to do, be, you want to be able to do. Because you know you did a mistake in I guess 150 step earlier, and how you want to correct it. Like usually you shouldn't, but you know if you want to. So then you know you just keep the Control Z pressed on, and then it will take you. 150 steps until uh, you know you are at that previous step and then you can you can edit that you can set it to 200 150 you know according to you okay there goes that so <clears throat> grouping that i just talked about you know you don't always have to right click and then group it here there is a shortcut for that as well which which is easy um you just have to uh, select the two objects that you want to group and now you have to press Control plus G. Uh, I'll write it here, CTRL plus G, okay? So if you press this, now you see that these two objects are grouped. Now I can, you know, take it as one unit and work. Now, if you want to ungroup this, suppose, you know, you want to ungroup this and, you know, work individually as well. You can press this, shift control plus G, it will ungroup the object. Blah, voila. Okay. And sometimes, you know, if we um, ungroup the object and, you know, there are different things in the artboard that you don't want to, you know, because, you know, I've ungrouped. Now, if I want to select these two objects, sometimes by mistakenly, this object can get selected. And that can create some uh, sort of annoyance. So, or, so that that doesn't happen, you can edit this object by keeping it grouped in this manner. You just created, uh, you just selected this object. Now double click it. Now it 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 took you to an isolated part, right? Only the objects that are grouped together. These will be able. Uh, like you will be able to edit this right so i'm editing this from here my work done you know select here again like go back to the normal or you know you can select back press here back to normal whatever this will take you back again to the artboard and now they're grouped again so this is how you work with grouped objects so the text here it's grouped i will ungroup this so that i can work with these shapes I've zoomed in. I'll show you the shortcut for zooming in. But before that, as you can see here, this is the zoom tool. You'll find it in the toolbar. With this zoom tool, you will be able to plus and you know go minus. Uh, there is a keyboard option for that. You know, if you select zoom tool and then you press, um, if you press um, plus on your screen, then it will uh, zoom uh, zoom in. And if you press uh, minus, then it will zoom out. And there's this option also where you know you will be able to see it, the zoom in option for your artboard. But it's better. I'm showing you uh, how you can use the keyboard and mouse so that you know you don't have to select this tool from here. What you do is you press on Alt, the Alt button on your keyboard. Uh, Alt, oops, right, Alt, and you just um, scroll your mouse. 
if you scroll, then you'll be able to see, suppose right here, I'm scrolling upwards. It's taking, you know, me more deeper, deeper, okay, whatever. And, you know, if I scroll down again, then, you know, it's taking me out. So in easier way, you know, you'll be able to do this, you know, without having to, go, you know, go through the hassle of all of those. You can use Alt and then you can use the mouse scroller to you know, zoom in and zoom out. That's easier. Okay, so yeah, where was I? I'm zooming in. Now, suppose I want to work with this L I just ungrouped, right? I've created outline and then um, I have ungrouped all of those. So now it's just uh, it's this different individual object. So now if I want to edit this letter, I'm going to the direct selection tool. I'm selecting these points and see. We're doing different stuff with it. I'm undoing. And now, suppose, you know, I want to create um, in a different type of uh, object with this. So I'm create, um, pressing on the curvature tool. And now as you see, there's a plus option in the path line. I've tapped on this and now I have this new point. Now, if you select on this point, then you will be able to, you know, change shapes according to this point. So that's how curvature works. If you have objects created, you can add these curvature uh, points, and then you can work with those. Uh, there's uh, this tool called uh, the line tool, you know, where you basically create a line. You have to drag and you know create a line. So you know that's there. There are tools for creating arc, spiral, rectangular grid, and everything is there. We use rectangular grid sometimes in, uh, to create pixelated art, but uh, we won't go through that details today. Now, this is a rectangle shape tool, right? Basically, with these, with this tool, we start working with different shapes. I've, I've selected uh, the rectangle tool, and you know, there, when you select an object or you know, create an object like this, you will be able to see the fill and stroke of an object. And below will be the color options. There's a gradient option, there's solid color option, and there, you know, there's null. I'm selecting black and the stroke is set to nothing. I can set the stroke color from here uh, because uh, only black will be shown here as stroke color since already black has been selected for this object. So you can uh, find the stroke from here. Um, as you can see, if we go to um, color panel here, you have a tool, it's called the eyedropper. You know, if you take it to any color you like, and then you can edit the stroke options from the properties, or there is there will be an option above here. Whichever you're comfortable with, you can work. You can you know select the points of the stroke. If you select if you select on stroke option, then you will see that um, there are options for strokes like you want to align stroke to the center, which means that there will be stroke on above and below the path line. And if you select inside, then you know, it will be only on the inside. Then if you select outside, then it will be only on, uh, on the outside. There are uh, different options for corner joint. Now, if you select uh, the round corner, you see that um, the stroke has been rounded. I'll show you, see, it wasn't round before. And then there's this bevel, op bevel joint, so you can you know, create bevel joints and all. There's this cap option. Um, if you are, there's an you know, open path, the end of the path will be you know, round cap or projecting cap or butt cap. So these are all the stroke options. Now, I would like to say one thing regarding the shape tool is that you will find uh, these available shapes by default, the rectangle tool, 
rounded rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, polygon tool, and star tool. And there's another tool called player tool. Only you won't be able to find the triangle tool here. Like you saw there's no triangle, right? So to create a triangle, you have to select a star tool. A triangle is not included in the basic shape. So you are selecting a star here. I'm creating a star. And before you um, release the mouse, sorry, before you release the mouse, you can uh, tap on, uh, there are uh, arrow signs on our keyboards, right? So you can tap on below uh, the down arrow and the number of sizes will uh, decrease and increase according to that. So if you want to create a triangle, you can, you know, keep pressing down arrow until, you know, you find a triangle and then, you know, boom, there's a triangle. So this is how you work with triangles. Um, now this is this uh, paint brush tool. And it works like um, other tools like in paint, right? What Illustrator does is that, you know, everything that you create with this paint tool gets smoothened out. Not just uh, this paint brush tool, other pen tools and pencil tools will be, uh, the things will be smoothened. So, you know, you, you get a good outlook. So, you know, this is what paint brush tool usually does. And there is a blob brush tool. Okay. Okay, this is the pencil tool. With pencil tool, we create um, custom paths, right? Um, if I go back to the pen tool, it works with um, points only points you have to create points and create shapes accordingly right if i wanted to create any curvature here i can do it directly with the pen point not necessarily i have to go back to the curvature point and do that there you just hold that point keep clicking in and then you know just drag that so you're getting a curvature here so you can this is what you can do with pen tool the pencil tool, what allows you is that, you know, you draw, you know, anything, uh, you know, any way you like to. And then according to the drawing, it will create, you know, points. So, you know, it, if you want to create custom points, you'll be able to do this with the pencil tool. Now, um, the eraser tool, what this does is that, you see, like the paintbrush tool, you know, it erases stuff. Okay. Oh, it's fun. Okay, anyway. Um, using uh, this rotate tool, you can rotate objects. First of all, you would have to um, select a point through which you want to rotate. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, right now, nothing is selected. First of all, you have to select an object that you want to rotate. So I'm selecting it with uh, the select tool. And now, suppose I want to rotate it. See, it has a base point. To which it will rotate see now if you want to change this point the, around the pivot point that you want to rotate so see it's rotating according to that so rotate tool is helpful for this otherwise you know you can just rotate any object in this manner but if you want to change the pivot point and rotate accordingly then the rotate tool is there rotate tool is effective for another thing i'm showing you Usually, when we type anything, um, blah, blah, then if you wrote, it's a type object, right? I haven't uh, taken it into a uh, art object yet. So as you can see that I'm not being able to rotate it, right? You know, the line goes into two lines. You know, it, it just, you know, divides. Now what you can do is that you can use this uh, rotate tool to rotate this object as well. Um, oops. Okay, now I'm selecting the corner and you see this object is rotating. Sometimes, you know, we download different templates from online and, you know, I found that I didn't used to know this before that, you know, their texts are being able to rotate, but, you know, why can't I do that? Then I found out that, you know, this is how you do it. So that's there. There's this perspective grid. You know, it will show you the perspective of the object, but uh, I don't usually require it for basic editing. 
you know you can have this and then there's this a gradient tool gradient tool if you have any object selected and you tap on with the gradient tool it allows you to put gradient colors on it right so uh, from uh, in in past like in the starting of the session i had shown you how to get the gradient from the window tab right so now that i ha i have this gradient tab open i'm going to select the color for the tab I would have been better if I had, you know, this tab above that. Okay. Oh, I removed my pathfinder. Did I? Oh, no. Okay. Now, selecting the gradient, I'm being able to see the color panel here as well. So I've selected this black and, you know, there are options for different colors. Uh, the color options are RGB, HSB stands for hue, saturation, and brightness, there's CMYK, so different types of selecting blue so you are just one if you want to change the color of this as well then you go to rgb and you know you select green so that's what gradient tool does okay now the eyedropper tool eyedropper tool is a great tool as well i'm showing you how it works suppose you have this object and you want this object color to be like just like this. So you don't want to go through the hassle to create the gradient and do that stuff again, right? Sometimes uh, the option is available here, the gradient that the last gradient color that you had chosen, it will be available here. But in case if it's not available, right? So we use the eyedropper tool. Here's the eyedropper tool, excuse me. Um, and you just tap on this object and the selected object becomes of that field easy as that um the shortcut for the eyedropper tool is i you see what you know adobe did there i eyedropper i yeah so uh, so if you select the i on your keyboard then you know you'll be able to easily you know you don't have to select it from here it will save your time to select any object, like you know, you, if you want to enable this uh, selection tool, there is B, right? It will enable the B, and you know, for uh, direct selection, there is A. So you know, everything has shortcuts. For type, you know, there is T. C. So there are shortcuts, and now if I tell you, you won't be able to remember them. You have to use them so that you know uh, you become more fluent using this tool and you, know, you can work faster and uh, these were the basic tools that you usually use with illustrator now a few more options i will also show you the work of the align and pathfinder tab we use the pathfinder for various reasons i'm showing you Okay, before that, uh, I, I would like to tell you a few more shortcuts that will come in handy. Uh, just like, you know, how we copy paste in our PC, right? So we are selecting uh, Control plus C to copy and Control plus V to paste it. But you see that, you know, this pasting has been done randomly inside the artboard. Huh? So I, suppose I don't want any random pasting. I want that I I want to create a paste above this object, suppose. Then I'm clicking Control, I'm tapping Control C, and then I'm pressing Control F. Instead of Control V, I'm pressing Control F. Now, if you, you know, hover down, voila, you see, there was another object on top of it, because what this does is that it pastes another object above it. And if you press Control plus B, 
then it will what it will do that it will create another object below it now i would like to show it in this manner if you check with me in the layers panel okay there are too many objects okay um Okay, here. If I, you know, move it in other other part of the artboard, as you can see that you know, here is another rectangle which was created because I had pressed Control C and then you know Control V. It pasted another object in the back. You see, this object is in the last part of the artboard, which means that it in the back of the artboard so that's how you paste objects in the back of an artboard with control b and in front of the object with control f now if you want to uh you know cut this object from the screen you can press control x so it's gone it's just you know how you work with other basic softwares as well this this is the same only that control f and control b part is new Okay, now let's get back to the Pathfinder. Here is the Pathfinder tab. I'm keeping it here. What, what Pathfinder usually does is, um, I'm showing you the different uh, things that you can do with Pathfinder. First of all, I change the color of this object. And now if I'm selecting these two objects, okay, there are different shape modes and uh, Pathfinder modes. The shape mode unite, what it does is that, you know, it will reunite the two objects. and it will make it of a single single color because now it has become a single object now if you want to change the color then you have to change it you know from the eyedropper or you know using this or you know using the color if you see here that there's another option called merge in the pathfinder what it does that it will merge the object but you know you will be able to still change the colors like both of them will won't be of the same color it will be same object but you know it won't be of same color so you know there's a difference of merge and unite i'm undoing um one minute okay back again to two objects there's this option uh minus front where you know the front object will just get eliminated with this part that it has been uh, overlapping on the you know below object that's the work of minus front there's intersection you know only the intersected part remains visible uh, there's exclude where you see only the intersected part got excluded but since you know both of these has uh, both of these have become a single object so they have changed to a single color now remind that all of the shape modes what it does is that you know it does its work and create a singular shape but pathfinder doesn't do this pathfinder will let you you know keep them as That's the into three different parts. I will show you um, how you have to first ungroup these objects, right? Anything that you do with Pathfinder, it will do its work, but it will um, it will um, group those objects. Okay. So now I'm going to ungroup them and show you. See, three parts, right? So that's how Pathfinder works, basically. Um, I'm undoing. Uh, okay. Now, um, merge. I've already shown you. There's trim. Now, you know, if you ungroup this, then you see two different parts. So the difference is that you know, shape lets you create a singular object, and you know, Pathfinder lets you allow money um, allows you to keep uh, the object different okay there's that uh, this is how you work with pathfinder now um there is this another tab as you can see align 
we have different objects in this um, artboard, artboard right now, right? So I suppose I'm selecting all of them, selected all of them. And now you see here's this option, align to artboard. And if I click the arrow, there's align to selection, align to key object, right? So if align to artboard is selected, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to horizontally align it into the center. See, all of them in the center. If I'm going to vertically align, then all of them, you know, just right, right in the artboard, in the middle of the artboard. So this is how align works. You know, you not just that. You know, you can select them. You know, you can distribute them from, you know, vertically. You know, you can keep, but same amount of space in the, you know, vertically same amount of space between the objects. There are different other stuff that you know you can explore. You can do lots of stuff with Illustrator. So this is how you do it. <clears throat> the align the align uh, tool works for this. <clears throat> there is this uh, brushes panel. There are uh, symbol panels. One thing that works with symbol is this um, symbol sprayer tool. Sometimes you know we have to download different uh, paint blobs and stuff like that from online. There, here are, are a, you know, a few symbols that you know you can use easily. I've selected uh, this uh, vector trim from the symbol, and I've selected that symbol sprayer. So it created a symbol. Now, if I keep it hold, then how it you know multiplies. Now, if you want, you can change the color. It has become an object. Now, if you want, uh, you know, you can change the color. Oh, apparently, you know, the, oh, it's a black symbol, so you won't be able to change the color of it. You, you will be able to. Uh, you have to expand it first. Okay, I hope this works. Let's see. Okay, yeah if I expand it and then I will be able to change the color. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll tell you the deal about expanding. Suppose um, we have created an object rectangle, right? I also um, gave it a stroke, suppose. Um, I'm going to properties. I'm giving it a stroke. I'm giving it a stroke aligned on the outside now. I want to work this differently as an object and this differently as an object, but currently they're the part of the same object, right? So what I do is I go to object and I expand the appearance. Now, when I expand the appearance, as you see, different objects have been created, right? They're different. Now, if you ungroup them, you'll be able to select them. See? this is a part and this is a part now as you can see there's an overlap part of the black triangle in the green area it's because the stroke i guess was selected um differently i guess what was the stroke selected if i select the stroke outside probably it was selected to uh, center that's why you were saying that overlap now you won't be able to see that overlap if I expand the appearance. Oh, it's still showing. Okay, even if it still is showing, you can use the pathfinder right here. Okay, then uh, we just uh, divide it. So now there are basically one, two, three objects on the screen. We ungroup it, and then we select this and this. Right now, I had talked about the shape unite. Right. I've united this shape. Now, this is a different object. This is a different object. That's how you can work as well. This is how you uh, work with strokes and you know objects and you know with expanding. Uh, I would like to show another thing uh, that you can do with images. It's a basic thing as well. I'll just open any image. Um, Let's see, what can I open? Okay, suppose I'm opening this picture. 
Oh, okay, it's really big. I'm transforming it and scaling it to 20%. Okay. So it's an image, right? It's not an object yet. So if I want to, you know, take it as an object, but it's usually suggested that don't create any object uh, of any any image because you know the quality won't be same uh, i'll show you how if you want to create uh, an object out of an image like you don't wa want to work it as an image you want to work it as an object right and you want to change you want to be able to change shapes and stuff like that what you do is uh, you go to image tracing with this option you will be able to you know take a um, Make it into an object. There is like first of all, if I select line art, so you know it's telling me that um, it will process because it's a large image, so it will take time to process the image. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So you know. Showing me a tracing result. Now, now if I expand, then it has become object. You know, many objects. If I ungroup, and then I'll be able to select all of those. Okay. Now I'm undoing the tracing thing. Uh, usually, what we do is we use tracing so that you know we can create a vector art out of an uh, image, right? Sometimes we do uh, people face uh, like portrait artworks and stuff. So. You can use tracing, uh, image tracing for that. If you're creating a sketch or something, uh, these uh, options will directly allow you to give the output like that and then you can work accordingly. Even if I select the higher fidelity uh, tracing options, as you can see, you know, it's doing its work. Usually it won't take so much time uh, because it's taking so much time in case of me because my laptop isn't, you know, doesn't contain the best you know graphical hardware and stuff that's why it's taking some time it will depend on the type of graphics card that you're using and you know your processing speed um i guess we should be done by now let's see <laughs> I'll give my PC a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, it will show you. Ooh, taking some time. Uh, it's taking so much time because first of all, the image is very large and you know it's taking time to process for the other reasons that I just mentioned. And now it created a high fidelity photo. You guys will be able to see a difference that you know it has become uh, some sort of a painting if you notice the uh, wood see it, it has turned into a painting all of those are going to become objects right so you see that you know thousands of objects are in this image if you know i created i turned it into an object from an image it's usually really hard to work with these but you know we sometimes do it for um artwork purposes i'm ungrouping this i'm selecting a few and i'm deleting it so you see uh you can do different of it that's right as well but keep image as an <laughs> image um, the last thing of today's session, clipping mask. It's not basic, but I think still, uh, since I just mentioned about pictures, you should be able to work with a clipping mask. Uh, it will allow you to, you know, uh, put different images in different shape of object. Um, let's bring that image back again on the screen. Oops, not here here um, scaling it back to 20 percent okay it will require to go smaller than that i'll create a 50 percent of this okay now i'm creating an ellipse suppose right and 
this ellipse doesn't have any fill. Now, I want that, you know, this image to be in the circular shape. So I'm moving it there and I'm going to scale it. You can do either, you know, with the mouse directly with the selection tool. And you, if you want to uniformly uh, scale it along all of the other sides, what you have to do is you have to press shift and alt. If you press shift and all, then you know it will increase uniformly. So, okay, there is that. Now, if I select the uh, ellipse and okay, okay, yeah. Now, what we will do is that remember about cl clipping mask is that um, the object that you are clipping the mask into should be above, like. Right? Here, the ellipse is above the uh, the image, as you see here. Um, where is my ellipse? Ellipse boy. Okay, here is the ellipse. Here is the ellipse. And, and you know, the image is below that. So I'm selecting both of them. Okay. So you see the image has turned into this shape. You can do this for you know any types of shapes that you create, not necessarily like of Illustrator. And you can understand like how much we can do with Illustrator, right? There is no end to it, and I I haven't even shown you the three D. I won't be in the basic uh, basic session because it's a bit hard and you need more understanding. <clears throat> so I would suggest all of you that uh, like all of you who have Illustrator, please with these tools, these basic tools, then I, you will be able to get handy with these tools and learn the shortcuts. If you Google, then you will be able to see shortcuts as well. And as I showed you, you will be able to find shortcuts from here as well, inside. So, that was the basics of Illustrator. Um, I I was, again, give me a second. Um, of everyone that was uh, today's uh, session on the basics of illustrator now uh, i need to ask one thing to our co-host that uh, can we take any questions from them yes sure we would love some questions okay so uh, i'm sharing uh, share If anyone has any questions, I guess I can use the chat bar. And then I'll um, answer those questions. Okay, that was a long question. Um, do you have any questions from the audience? Like, you know, if you uh need to show uh like if you need to tell me to show anything okay i hope i was describing enough <clears throat> so guys uh, this is how you use the basic tools of illustrator to work i would suggest everyone to download illustrator uh for the from uh can you get uh, this class uh, recording uh you will be able to uh, we will uh upload the videos uh after we're done with all of the sessions not now 
you will get this class recording but once uh, the whole uh, course ends so that's there um and so one thing that i was saying is that uh, yes uh, so first assessment uh, for today's session uh, you we will mail you the assessment since it was a basic um session today uh, i will provide a few questionnaire uh, like a few multiple choice questions which will be really easy and the thing that i just told uh, the answers will be very easy you will be able to answer those properly so uh, the submission deadline and everything will be mailed to you today and you will uh, get uh, 24 hours uh, for submitting on the google form so all of these will be uh, sent to you and then uh, your certificates will be sent to you accordingly we, it, it will also be mailed after you know the instructors you know check the responses and all so i guess <clears throat> i guess yeah that's there um yes Sultana Kinur is saying that yeah we have prepared a task for you yeah which will be sent to you through mail yeah so yeah keep an eye out in your inboxes for the mails and yeah that's how you will uh, you will need to uh, submit the assessments uh, like at respond to the questions uh, to be able to get the certificate so please answer those questions uh, those and it will be really easy i have kept the questions really easy and just according to the session you won't find anything new there so I guess, yeah, that marks the end of today's session. Thank you for all for, you know, patiently bearing all of these with me. It was a good session. And I hopefully uh, the people who are taking today's session will be there for uh, the typography and poster design and uh, logo designing as well. Uh, those sessions will be really interesting. So I will encourage all of you to be present in those sessions. Uh, we will be able to learn a lot of things from the other instructors as well. So yeah, that's all from me. I'll say goodbye now. Okay, thank you, Tazur, very much for this session. We all learned a lot, and I hope that this session was effective for all of us. Now, this marks the end of our first session, Exploding Arab Illustrator, our webinar series, uh, from which we, ha we are conducting these sessions. Our next session will be on exploring Adobe Photoshop, where we will, uh, we will have some more amazing instructor and we will have another session like this. So please stay tuned and keep an eye on our event page for these sessions. Uh, we hope we are doing something good for you. Thank you very much, everyone. That's all. And I would like to thank everyone on behalf of Communic for uh, staying staying with us and joining us in this session. We are very happy to conduct this session for you. Thank you. Okay.